Hello and welcome to the Slackware ARM vlog. I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect and developer for Slackware ARM. And in this video, I'm just going to test these new Slackware kernel packages, which I've built using the Raspberry Pi's um, Linux kernel um, fork. And essentially, uh, Slackware and all of the other mainline distributions that are multi-platform, multi-architecture, we use Linus Torvalds kernel from kernel.org. And um, the Raspberry Pi uh, tend to favor uh, development in their own kernel forks as a branch, it's a copy of Linus Torvalds kernel. And as a consequence of that is that the mainline kernel, the Linus Torvalds kernel that we all use, uh, sometimes doesn't have the latest um, fixes, the latest bug fixes, uh, and also there's a feature disparity between the two kernels as well. So whilst these uh, bug fixes and uh, feature updates do eventually make it into the um, mainline Linus Torvalds kernel, there is quite a lag there. As you may have seen in a previous video when I started at KDE, uh, it crashed. And apparently you guys have said that it doesn't crash if you use the Raspberry Pi kernel fork. So I've created a, a little wrapper script that wraps the, um, you know, calls the Slackware ARM kernel build system with a few parameters. And uh, at the moment I've created it just to build Raspberry Pi kernels, but there are a few of you on the forum that are also looking at other hardware models. So you might find this script quite useful actually, um, you know, just to be able to build uh, kernels using, you know, another vendor's fork until they get their support up into, uh, upstreamed into the mainline kernel. So what I'll do is, I'll show you now that script a little bit, just so you can see, because I will release it and it will be documented as well. But let's just have a quick look at how it works. Okay, so the script I've been working on, it's in the Slackware ARM source tree in the K series directory, and it's called build alt src kernel.sh. So basically, you can just run this script inside of the source directory once you've configured uh, your uh, the Slackware ARM build kit package. And all of this is documented and I'll include it um, later. I'll post a note to the forum once I've finished it in the next couple of weeks. But essentially what you do is you just run this script and uh, it builds Slackware compatible packages. Well, it builds Slackware kernel packages from the uh, Raspberry Pi kernel fork source tree basically what it does um, but as I said I've also created uh, I've, I've, you know I've extend I've made it reasonably extensible so that you can use it to build packages from other kernel forks as well so there's a few different options in here and uh, I just haven't quite finished it yet if you look at uh, build alt conf Oh, I could have just gone into there, couldn't I? <laughs> CD, right? So basically, you have this script called build, uh, build alt src kernel.sh, and that's the one you run, um, and, it, and it basically just calls the Slackware ARM kernel build system with a few parameters, um, and basically points it to the Raspberry Pi kernel fork source, and that's pretty much what it does. And you can look here, and basically we have the settings here. So the way that the script works is, uh, at least for the Raspberry Pi, is that it downloads the source from the Git repo um, and then it configures it, it prepares it, deletes some garbage in there, renames a few things, um, configures it with the default config for the Raspberry Pi 4 and then it just changes some stuff to make it compatible with Slackware and then it basically builds it. There will be a few caveats with this though, uh, and I'll document these as well, but essentially I'm thinking, um, I'm not going, the Slackware, the official Slackware kernel package that uses the Linus Torvalds kernel is the feature rich, you know, fully featured kernel in Slackware. So it has, you know, f many more, um, it, it, let's put it this way, it's configured maximally. So it has a lots of different, uh, device drivers, um, various different uh, file systems, all sorts of different stuff. Um, and again, you guys, if you want to, you can just ask on a forum if you want some additional, for, uh, if you'd like some additional features in the kernel or, or support in a kernel. Usually it's not in there just because it wasn't in the default kernel and no one asked for it yet and I didn't need it and Brent didn't need it. So it doesn't go in <laughs> generally in, until it's needed. Or I just see it when I'm when I'm happen to be looking around and think, oh, that looks like a good idea. And so that's generally how that process works. Um, but that's that process 
it, you know, the, the fully featured kernel is only for the official Linus Torvalds kernel. I won't be taking any, uh, you know, kernel configuration change requests for the Raspberry Pi kernel. So we'll just be using the default config for the Raspberry Pi, which is what I think the Raspberry Pi um, developers, uh, they set that up. So I assume that it's, it's good. But, but again, it doesn't have all of the support that the uh, Slackware kernel has. I don't really see the need to have feature requests for this kernel, because really this kernel is just to bridge the gap between you know uh, bug fixes and sort of major you know subsystems making it upstream. An example of a subsystem would be the video driver a VC4, which is what you need on the Raspberry Pi to get a good you know um, a usable uh, experience in the graphical environment. Otherwise, it's just too slow. So now, uh, now I've shown you that. What I'm going to do is just see how we are doing, because okay. Oh yes. So at the moment, the build, uh, the the packages uh, that I need, the runtime packages have been created. So, alt kernel packages package. At the moment, it's just building a kernel source package, but I don't need that to uh, to test. So just all I really need is the A series. Yeah. Let's check the sizes of these. Okay. Cool. So what I'm going to do uh, a I'm just going to copy these packages off of the uh, master build machine onto the Raspberry Pi. Now, the thing is that I haven't tested these packages um, before. I've tested building packages from the Raspberry Pi kernel fork, but that was back on Linux 5.15 when I uh, created the, the, the customization document that you can find on the uh, docs.slackware.com wiki but since then I don't yeah I haven't tested the latest uh, Linux 6.1 branch at all so what I'm going to do uh, I, I would say I'm reasonably confident that it'll work but I, I don't really know um, I'm going to make it easy for myself I'm going to add the slack pbs kernel command line um, to the uh, to the bootloader config so that it triggers the slackware preboot shell in the um, operating system initial RAM disk. So Muttley is my uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, where is it? Boot. Uh, yeah. That's the one. X Linux. Okay. So there is a Slack PBS. Uh, sorry, SLK PBS. So SLK PBS is the pre boot shell. And basically, what this is, is that when the system boots, this is basically a a, a, um, a tool that I built into the boot process while I was doing the Slackware ARCH64 port um, to, to base, basically to do exactly things like this, to do troubleshooting, to help onboard new hardware models. So adding this allows me to basically interact with the boot sequence. So if it goes wrong, I can probably fix it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do there. Now, before we do that, I'm just going to change the window manager on the Raspberry Pi back to KDE because, as you may have seen in a previous video, I moved it to XFCE because that works. So I'm just going to revert it to KDE and then just still and check that it still crashes because I've upgraded KDE since that video. Okay, so it's going to X, X in it. Is it still KDE? Yeah. Oh, XFCE rather. LN FS. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi's. So this is the Raspberry Pi's console. Let's type start x there and see what happens. We should see that KDE seg faults. I want to say hopefully, but <laughs> obviously I don't really want it to seg fault, but uh, I expect it to. But if it doesn't, then I'm, I'm not sure I'm even going to test these packages. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> I'm only concerned about KDE seg faulting, to be honest. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's seg faults. Right, so let's... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's uh, kill uh, that with control alt and backspace. Yeah, there we go. All right. So... Okay, what we need to do now is do the package upgrades. Okay, so let's do, yeah, 
star z you'll probably notice well i was thinking about what to do with this at the moment the if you do actually you name dash r Hopefully that'll stay on the screen for a moment. So you'll notice this is the output of uname. So it's the kernel version, Linux kernel version, and then a hyphen with the architecture, and then it's gone. <laughs> um, I could have changed this for the Raspberry Pi kernel fork packages, but actually it's better, I think, for me to just uh, leave it as it is. Um, I only wanted to, to change it so, it, so that uh, it helps with supportability, so I can see more easily what kernel people are using. And when they ask questions on the forum, so they can just type u name dash r, and then I can see, oh, okay, oh, it's the Raspberry Pi kernel, or you, you know. But instead, what I've done is I've um, just made it so that the package file names, as you can see, the build tag, which is the last. Um, oh yeah, okay, that's fine. That's to be expected. Um, yeah, basically, I've just appended un underscore RPI to the build tag. There, I need to make a note of that. Oops, yeah, okay. That's to be expected though, actually, so that's not a concern. Okay. Right, so yeah, that's just OS init RD manager uh, doing that. Um, I won't go into why that is. I'll explain why that is in the documentation, but that's fine. So, um, yeah, we should be good. So what, what we'll do now is we'll just reboot it. So I'm now attached to the serial console and you can see the monitor here. And this way we can uh, watch everything reboot on both the monitor and the serial console simultaneously. I've also plugged the Raspberry Pi directly into the HDMI monitor there. It's no longer through my um, uh, it's no longer through my KVM. Okay, so, oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see it works better with the uh, monitor plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi. So this is only the bootloader, it's nothing to do with the kernel. And now you see it's the Raspberry Pi kernel. You can see the little, uh, they've got that configuration with the logo there. I mean, I could put that in the Slackware one, actually. I think we used to have it on x86 years ago, but it's... Uh, dropped out for some reason oh okay oh yes we're in uh ah oh, that's a pain okay that's interesting ah that's interesting i've not set okay so the raspberry pi kernel is configured quite differently so this is the so We've got the serial console here, and on Slackware ARCH64 with the Linus Torvalds kernel with all of the default stuff, this is the other way around. We've got this kind of stuff. We've got the initial output on the serial console, and the everything else goes on the frame buffer. But here it's the other way around, so that's something I, I need to note as well. But that's not a problem, so... Okay, that's fine. Hmm. Let's see... Okay, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, actually. I'm not surprised that it can't load these modules here, though, because those actually could... Uh, well, they're, they're probably not enabled in the kernel because they're not required. Because the thing about the Raspberry Pi kernel is that it's only configured for um, for the Raspberry Pi, whereas the Slackware ARCH64 kernel is configured to support you know, a whole variety of different hardware models. So it's okay that some of this stuff is not in their kernel because it's just probably not required. Okay, so we've exited in the last stage. Oh, I meant to type in um, fdisk there to see whether it had found the the uh, storage. But it obviously has because it's booting. Cool. Okay, well... I don't want to say anything until I get the login prompt, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, so here's, so with the config as it is at the moment, the you lose the serial console access the moment that the kernel starts. So that's worth noting as well. Okay, so let's just log in here. Let's see what happens with KDE. Let's see what, what happens here. I'm curious, it, if it does work, I'm curious to see how fast it is. 
as well. Let's see. Hmm. Well, it hasn't crashed yet. And uh, with the other kernel, it crashed immediately, I think, didn't it? So I don't know. What, yeah, cool. OK, let's see. So this is going to be a little bit slow loading Firefox because I don't think I've, oh no I have loaded it before actually okay cool okay oh the clock's wrong fine but okay uh, that works okay well I'm going to log out now because I want to revert the kernel I want to roll it back to the official kernel package to make sure that that uh, roll forward and roll back process works okay so I'm just going to mount okay so kernel modules yeah so that's we're now rolling back to the official slackware kernel packages kernel modules and kernel packages just to uh, make sure that that process works correctly. I think that it should do. Right, actually, whilst that's uh, doing that on that screen, I'll just uh, remove the Slack PBS, SLK PBS config, because we don't need that. So, okay, done. So we just need to wait for the uh, main kernel package to reinstall, which shouldn't take a moment. I imagine there'll probably be some output from OS initRD manager here as well, complaining about the modules, uh, but it shouldn't cause any concern. When you upgrade to the uh, you know, the official Slackware kernel packages with the Linus Horvalds kernel, you shouldn't get any mod info errors out of those. those should, that should be a clean process. It's only because we're switching to kernels that are configured really quite differently um, that you, you have this, uh, this noisy output. But it's actually just it's harmless, really. Because, because all the kernel modules that you require for the Raspberry Pi are either baked into, the, they're compiled into the kernel itself, or they are configured as modules and so they're present within the operating system initial RAM disk anyway, and it just works. Okay, so that's upgraded. I've removed the SLK PBS. Set the date first. Clock W. Does it work? No, because it hasn't got the. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, so we can just reboot then. Okay, so we can see the machine is now rebooting. We should get to see something on the serial console in a moment as the bootloader kicks back in. Yep, okay, cool. Okay, so this is now booting, uh, this is now booting the official Slackware uh, kernel package. Of the, Linus, of the Linus Torvalds kernel. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see it's the other way around here. So you'll see on the right hand side on the monitor, once the frame buffer module is loaded, then you get all of that output there. But until then, you only get it on the uh, uh, on the serial console. But that looks cool. Looks like it works. Okay, well, that was a success. So hopefully that will be useful for you guys uh, who have Raspberry Pis. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll release these packages and finish the documentation for it as well. So you know how to install it and you've got that process you can follow. 
So if you found this video useful, you can like and subscribe to the channel as well. And remember that this project exists really through your donation. So if you like what we're doing here, please feel free to uh, visit the links on the screen and donate as you wish. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.